Welcome to the NYY Recaps Post Game Show. The stream is about to begin. A no hitter! Full game over! Yankees win! That ball is high! Oh my god, yeah. Lineup for tonight's game against the Red Sox. Yankees try to avoid the sweep. DJ LeMahieu leading off at second base. Aaron Judge is out there in right field. He's the DH tonight. John Carlo gets the night off again. Calabria Torres out there at shortstop. Gio Urshela has been great defensively. He's over at third base. Gary Sanchez behind the dish. Chris Gittens makes his second major league start tonight. He's at first base. Clint Frazier's out there in right field once again. Miguel and Duhart, tough night in left yesterday. He is out there in left once again, batting eighth and batting ninth. Brett Gardner out there in center field. And on the mound, Domingo Herman. He is 4-3 this year with a 3.27 ERA in 10 starts, 55 innings, 52 strikeouts, an excellent 1.036 whip, and a 1.2 war on the season. Career against Boston, he is 2-1 with a 5.11 ERA in six games, five of which were starts. 35 strikeouts, though, in 24 and two-thirds innings. Due to national blackout rules, we will have limited highlights tonight. And then a quick word from our sponsor, and then I'll be back with the recap and post-game Q&A. Big flies for Aaron Judge, likely headed to Denver as an all-star, and he's got a base hit into left field. Not only for his great defense, it's a nice little hit in there. Into center field, three straight base hits. Hernandez up and Sanchez rips the ball into the left field corner. That'll do damage. Judge scores easily. Torres right beat. Grounded out in his first at bat tonight. That's a line shot out to left. And it'll take a hop before Andujar can collect it. On his way to. 0-1 pitch to Marwin Gonzalez, a high drive into the left field corner, and Duhar back, and it's gone! The next 0-2, another curveball, lined into the left field corner, and it takes a while! Judge is going to be waved around to score the tying run here in the ninth! Oh, and my goodness, Barnes gets a call on a curveball to send this game into extra innings! And Bogarts lines it into the gap in left center field. That'll score them both. A bouncing ball to the right side of the infield. It's thrown away. A run scores. Wade's on his way to... Manscaped. They were kind enough to send me this lawnmower 4.0. This is their latest ball trimmer. This thing has a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents, which is important if you're putting a vibrating razor blade on your boys. You're gonna love this thing if you have cats, mischievous cats like mine, because my cat chews through every cord that we have in the house. We have to replace cords all the time. Well, this thing has a wireless charger. So the only cord goes from the back of this thing directly into the wall. You just drop your lawnmower into the cradle and it charges. Father's Day is just around the corner, and you probably need a gift for your hairy dad. Make your dad proud this year and get him and yourself the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right. The Lawnmower 4.0. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code NYYRecaps at manscaped.com. Take it from me. Your balls will thank you. <sighs> Turning into a depressing job, guys. <laughs> Another tough one. Uh, if you saw the game, why are you even here? Why would anyone want to relive this? Uh, Severino took his first step on the road to recovery today. He pitched in a rehab start in Tampa and was throwing 96 to 98 miles an hour on the radar gun. He pitched two and two-thirds innings and gave up two hits and one run, throwing 34 total pitches. 
Sounds great. Can he hit? Can he hit? Seriously. I've got him penciled in to start around maybe July 7th against the Mariners. Uh, He should make one start before the All-Star break, and then he'll be in the rotation for the second half. How in the world is the second half almost here? Uh, Somebody says, how are you smiling? I'm smiling to hide the rage. Go watch Anger Management with Jack Nicholson and Adam Sandler. Gurus Fraba. John Carlos Stanton was out of the lineup tonight. Uh, at the beginning of the lineup, he would factor in. But call me crazy, if he has another injury, you know, I say we just throw him in the outfield when he gets back. You know, maybe he's getting too much rest. I feel like if he was playing regularly, his body would be looser and, and, and adjust, and we wouldn't need to have these constant hot streak, injury trip, ramp up, and then hopefully not injury. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, Alex Verdugo got a th- got things started with a solo home run on the top of the first. Lefties seem to do really well at Yankee Stadium. Devers, Verdugo. Isn't that the oddest thing? That lefties seem to hit well in this ballpark? It's almost like the Yankees should have more left-handed hitters. But tonight, eight right-handed hitters in a row. And then Brett Gardner, who's basically a pitcher at this point. Judge Torres and Urshela pick up back-to-back-to-back singles in the first with one out. Then Sanchez rips one into the corner to make it 2-1. to one. But Chris Gittens and Clint Frazier strike out to end the threat. Garrett Richards had nothing early, and I liked how aggressive the Yankees were being. Picking up base hits. They had seven hits through the first few innings. Red Sox go quietly in the second and third. Domingo Herman was solid. Uh, bottom of the third, Judge leads off with a absolute bullet single to right field, but Glaber bounces into a double play. Yankees are just the ch- world champions of double plays. If the object was to hit and to make as many double plays as you can in a season, the Yankees would be running away with this shit. Uh, but uh, getting strikes out to end the threat once again. Uh, top of the fourth, and Duhar makes a great throw from left field to nail the runner at second. Nothing for Boston in the fourth. Bottom of the fourth. The Yankees load the bases and score on a fielder's choice. A rocket off the bat of Aaron Judge up the middle that there was a nice play on. 3-1 to one Yanks after four. Domingo Herman exits after five and two-thirds. Litke strikes out Devers on an absolutely filthy, mind-bending curveball over the inside part of the plate. Great pitch from him. Final line from Herman. He did his job. Five and two-thirds, three hits, one run, one earned run, two walks, three strikeouts. His ERA is down to a very respectable 3.12. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling what I'm seeing from Domingo Herman. Marwin Gonzalez tied the game in the top of the seventh with a two-run home run off of Litke to make it 3-3. Sack fly gives the Red Sox the lead in the eighth, 4-3. At that point, I'm I'm ready to pack my bags and, and go home because I feel like the Yanks aren't coming back, but they do. Bottom of the eighth, Frazier singles, uh, but Andujar strikes out, and Stanton, who's in as a pitch hitter, also strikes out. Uh, And then a clutch double by Glaber to tie it up in the ninth after a judge walk. The crowd was just freaking out in the bottom of the ninth. Whole city's been waiting for a reason to cheer for, you know, almost two years now, year and a half since the pandemic began. And that was the loudest I've heard the stadium. They had that, oh, oh, oh," that, that, you know, chant that they do, the singing. And it sounded like a soccer stadium. It was great. Uh, But then Odor gets called on a breaking ball out of the zone. You're seeing his reaction. It was, you know, probably six to eight inches out of the zone. And it got called for strike three. Pissed off Phil Nevin and Carlos Mendoza. Phil Nevin just back off of the COVID list, almost strikes, uh, almost strokes out on the field and going ballistic, and he gets tossed. And then Carlos Mendoza gets tossed from the bench. I was just hoping they would toss the whole coaching staff, get rid of Boone, get rid of Tim's, get rid of everybody. Matt Blake, you can stay, but let the players play. Uh, Bogarts rips one to left to give the Red Sox a 6-4 lead in the top of the 10th. Bottom of the 10th, Clint Frazier gets hit by a pitch on the first pitch to put the tie run on base. And then Andujar hits one right back up the middle, just some bad luck right at the pitcher. It becomes a double play. Wade gets the runner in, but the Red Sox hold on to win 6-5. Paging Hal Steinbrenner, the ship is sinking. You're in the shipbuilding business, right? At least your dad was. This ship is taking on water. I'm loving this. Yankees for life says hashtag fire everybody. Let me make these a little bigger. Fire everybody. I'm with you, buddy. Rob Freeman says Phil Nevin should be manager. F Boone. 
I'm taking it you guys are upset with Boone. Joseph Cantalupo says, facts, Boone had no emotions. He doesn't give an F. Well, it is what it is. Um, you could say that he's trying to stay cool. You could say that he's trying to, you know, stay calm and collected and not get himself tossed. But, yeah, I, I felt like he should have been a little more hot under the collar there. This team can't make runs, says Daryl Leon, because they are slow and heavy, no bunts, no stolen bases, no hit and run, nothing in their blood. They have no pride in themselves. I don't know that it's a pride thing. I, I don't know if I would go that far. But you're definitely right on them being kind of heavy and unathletic. You know, um, but the guy who drove in two runs tonight was Gary Sanchez, and he's probably the heaviest and most unathletic guy on the roster, Sans. Uh, well, I mean, not heaviest, but in terms of just like, you know, he's, he's the fattest dude on the team, and he <laughs> he picked up a two-run double. So, uh, you know, it's just a bad baseball. They, don't, they put a ton of runners on base. They don't hit with runners in scoring position. Uh, a lot of times they hit into double plays when they have men on base. It's 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 a double play thing. Danny C says, "Do you think Matt Blake should replace Aaron Boone as manager?" I I don't think so because he's a he's a good pitching coach. Just let him stay in his job. I would love to see you know a Showalter or you know someone of that ilk who's got many many years of experience as a manager. Somebody who can who's seen it all on a baseball field and can get a team that's struggling going again. Sometimes you just have been around the game long enough that you've somehow by osmosis brought in all of these tips and and ideas and whatever. There's this uh, movie called Talent for the Game and this old scout, whenever his pitcher was feeling down, he would give him some kind of a uh, you know a motivational talk. And at the end of the game, this, you know this pitcher he's pitching in his major league debut, he's getting roughed up, and then the scout sneaks his way onto the field as the catcher. He kind of looks like the catcher, and so he goes out to the mound and he he settles him down. He says, "Hey, you know what we're having for dinner tonight? Dinner tonight? Sushi." And the, like you know back then that this kid is like a, he's like a country bumpkin or whatever. He'd probably never heard of sushi or whatever. He tells him it's raw fish, and that seemed to lighten him up. And then from there on, he was better. That's just an example. It's an allegory. It's fiction. But it's, a, it's an example of wisdom. Wisdom from elders who've been there. We used to value the wisdom of our elders. I don't think that's so much what we do anymore. Uh, Coltrane says, fire almost everyone except the pitching coach. I'm with you. Uh, Mr. Pizza says, DJ has been in a bad slump. I talked about this on the – I don't know if it was the watch party or one of the post games. I'm a little bit worried at, about DJ at this point. At, at some point – it becomes more than a slump. We're 60 games in, roughly. There's only 100 games left. We're, we're almost to the All-Star break. And he's still really struggling. He's taking, a, he's taking a big step backwards. And he was somebody that I projected would regress a little bit. I think I had him hitting 290 this year with about 20 home runs. You know, you can't hit 360 every year. There's a reason people don't do that, generally. Especially as they age. But he's taking a huge step back. I worry that maybe it's, you know, he's got a new baby at home. Maybe he's not getting enough sleep. Maybe when he's on the road, he's, you know, spending a lot of time feeling homesick. I don't know what it is. I don't want to make excuses for the guy, but I'm worried about him. And I hope that he gets it turned around because we need him. Former eBayer says, I canceled my MLB TV today. I'm not paying this team should lose any longer. Everyone should join me. Hey, as long as you still come to NYY Recaps, each night after the game, uh, Benji Stokar says Sessa is overused. I agree with you. He's been overused a lot lately. Uh, let's see. Alex Cora shows Aaron Boone how to manage. I, I hate to say it. Alex Cora is one of the best managers in baseball. Full stop. He motivates that team. They've been great. They were world champions a couple of years back. MLB found found no signs of cheating there. So, but regardless, he puts like pictures of great moments on the wall. He finds little ways to to motivate his players. What's Aaron Boone doing to motivate these guys? We granted don't get a close look behind the scenes. I would love one of those shows that's kind of in the same style of the Path to the Major show that Yes does. I think it's called like 
hometown road. I don't know what road to the Bronx, whatever it is. Uh, I would love to see one of those that takes place in the clubhouse, the Yankees clubhouse, where it's like behind the behind the scenes, like hard knocks. There was a uh, a version of that a few years back with the White Sox called the franchise, and that was amazing. But baseball, look, baseball needs to to make the players more relatable because the sport just doesn't have the star power as like the NBA does, you know, and they just need to, and, and the NFL for that matter, they just need to, to allow the fans to get a little bit closer. And I think a, a show like that, AKA like hard knocks would be awesome for baseball, but yeah, I'm worried about DJ. Uh, hey, we got a super chat from Jordan Martin. I will say this about the Sox: They play smart fundamental baseball and they get big hits. They're light years ahead of the Yankees right now. First of all, don't know hype. And second of all, I agree. I hardly agree. Ryan D says, DJ is a catalyst. He needs to do better. I agree with you. Dean Jones says, Jorge Posada for manager. I don't know if he wants to. He seems like he's having a good life. He's got a beautiful wife. I sat next to her at a baseball game one time in, I want to say, 1997 or 1998. Just absolutely gorgeous woman. If I was, you know live in his lifestyle down there. I wouldn't want to come and spend the next four months managing this team. Are you kidding me? Um, MBCVADF3 says, replace Flor- or replace Frazier with Florial. You know, Frazier's been playing a little bit better. If you go back 10 or 12 games, he's hitting in the 270s, 280s. He's shown a little bit of power. He had that walk-off. I like watching Frazier, but it's clear that the Yankees are not left-handed enough. I mean, that's just absolutely clear. Uh, A-Rod talked about it tonight. Eight righties in a row to begin the lineup. This stadium is built for left-handed hitters. I mean, you put a routine fly ball to right center field is a home run. It's like Brian Cashman is trying to beat the shift, the martini glass shift on the right side uh, at Yankee Stadium by just having all right-handed hitters. I, you know, it's just it's unfathomable to me that they don't have any right-handed hitters. And Floreal, he is a left-handed hitter, so that would be something that I could see happening. But if you're going to if you're going to put a lefty in there, let's go out and get somebody. Let's go get Jesse Winker. He hit 3 home runs today. Again, second time this year he's done that. Hey, we got another dono. This one is from Pat Soggy Chicken Bucket. Adam Frazier, where do you think he would play? Look, um first of all, dono hype. Adam Frazier is He'd be in there for his bat. I mean, you could put him in left. You could put him in center. I don't know how much he's played center, but uh, I just I, I like his bat. I like his bat. Uh, somebody says a rod for manager. Now that that's an interesting that's an interesting idea. But here's the thing: Brian Cashman hates a rod, and the Yan- he sued the Yankees organization. So I don't think that would ever ever happen. I'm gonna get a drink of water. Enjoy this music real quick. All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, CC. So people were talking about CC and CC getting back in the game. CC likes his family life. He is playing softball in Central Park. He's living the dream. I don't see him managing, but he is around the team. He works for the Yankees. He can give a talk to the team if he wanted to. I'm sure. Right now, this team just needs to start hitting. He's a pitcher. I think they need a talk from a hitter. Honestly, the ex-Yankee that I think would do the, the best job would be Paul O'Neill because he understands hitting. He understands the value of not giving away at bats. Got another super chat here from Board, Roca, uh, Board Recon Veteran. Why is our backup coaches showing more passion than Boone? I agree. Yes, I agree. And also, don't know hype. Got another one here. Cashman needs to step down willingly and give someone else the opportunity. Thank you for the dono. I hardly agree. Yeah, Cashman's got to go. We see Rob Freeman saying fire Cashman here. I'm the the general the general vibe that I'm getting from fans go headed headed into an off day is that they're unhappy with the overly right-handed lineup. They're unhappy with the manager, and they're unhappy with the general manager, the overall philosophy of this team. This team's been underperforming since last year. So the the vibe that I'm getting from everybody is that this isn't working and some changes need to come down. 
The Yankees are headed to Minnesota. They'll probably beat Minnesota. Ball seems to travel well there when the Yankees are in town. So hopefully they'll get some hits and get going a little bit, but I just am not feeling great about this team right now. I definitely think changes are in store. Mike Prince says Epstein for GM. Theo Epstein took the Red Sox and the Cubs to the World Series, and he is available. I think he wants to run a team. I really do. There's been talk about making him a commissioner or whatever, and I think he still wants to run a team. Uh, Lori C. says, fire Thames, or Tims, should say. Maybe that's part of the problem. Maybe he pronounces his name wrong. Throwing off his whole feng shui. Ceciliano says, Paul O'Neill for manager. I agree with you. I would love to see O'Neill as a manager, but the problem is that O'Neill, he likes being at Studio 21 with Nelly. You know, not everybody wants to be on the road for months and months at a time. I know I don't. If I had a chance to be a Yankees beat writer, I would probably take it, you know, traveling from city to city. But as much fun as that would be, watching every game, I think I would be depressed because I like my home life. I like my house that I designed. I like being around my wife. I like being around my dogs. You know, he's got kids and grandkids now, and I'm sure he wants to be home and, and, and not be on the road, especially having to watch this team from the booth. I mean, he understands how bad they are. So uh, let's see. Uh, Damian Serrano says, fire Tims and bring up Phil Plantier. If you go back and look at Phil Plantier's numbers, he was terrible as a professional hitter. Uh, so I don't know what he can do. I I know the Yankees love him, but I, I don't trust their uh, judgment at this point. Another super chat here from Board Rican uh, veteran. Definitely have to at least get a lefty center fielder, shortstop, and first base. I think Glaber might be okay at shortstop, but I'm I, I agree with A Rod. A Rod was talking about moving him back to second base where he can hit better. And I agree with you. I think he was a great second baseman. I think they should move him back there. Uh, if you have to move, you know, uh, a Luke Voigt to allow to allow DJ LeMahieu to play first base since you just signed him to that big contract, that might be something you you have to do. The Yankees are going to have to be creative. We've got another super chat here. If Boone got fired 100%, would he ever coach again? I think 100% no. The whole plan needs to change. Most disappointing Yankee team of all time, not close. Yeah, this reminds me of when Bobby Valentine went to go be the manager of the um, Red Sox, and he utterly failed. Just utterly failed. Got another dono. I'm going to do dono for everybody's SB game. Says, super chat. Uh, he didn't write a question, but I appreciate that. So here comes the uh, sounds here. The donos were coming in too fast Excellent. that I wasn't able to uh, respond too much. I got to find one more for three. Boom. <laughs> my kind of team, Charlie. It's my kind of team. John Strausser says, dude, speaking of Kratz, I never realized the Yankees played him in the Phillies World Series. I think he made the last out of one of the games. You know, Kratz would be a great manager. He was a great guy for the bench. He's kind of a, a great, um, you know, baseball guy. I've always liked those veteran catchers. You know, Girardi was a veteran catcher. Uh, catchers have to be involved in the game at all times. You kind of have to see the entire field and you know know what you know what's going on with the runners on base and you know how holes open and how to, you know they have to know pitchers and how to work guys in and out and up and down and hard in soft away things like that. They have to understand these things. They have to under, understand uh, the base runners and and who can take an extra base. The outfielder arms. Catchers are totally in there. They have to know signs and they're familiar with the. They're the coaching systems, a lot of times the the manager or the coaches will relay signs direct, directly to the uh, catcher. So uh, I just think that it's um, it's great to have catchers as your as your G as your uh, manager. SB Game says Dave Winfield for manager. Dave Winfield I think would be a great hitting coach. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give you the applause for the soup chat. All right, guys, I got one more super chat and then I'm calling it a night. What would George Steinbrenner do? Does Boone make it to the All-Star break? Buck would be perfect. Can we trade Stanton? This team has no heart. So answering your questions in order. What would George Steinbrenner do? I'd imagine uh, Tim's would have been gone a couple of weeks ago. Uh, just back in 2007, the Yankees had hamstring issues, and he fired the trainer about two weeks into the season. He fired uh, Yogi Berra 
about a week into the season, 16 games, something like that. Does Boone make it to the All-Star break? Unfortunately, I think Boone's going to make it the whole season because I don't think Hal Steinbrenner cares, and I don't think he views Aaron Boone as the problem. Buck would be perfect. Wholeheartedly agree. Yes, I agree. And this team has no heart. They actually started to fight back a little bit today, but they didn't get it done. Looks like we got one more. Plantiers who fixed Gio Urshela just saying. Okay, I didn't know that. So, applause to you. All right, guys, I'm going to call it a night. I appreciate it. Thank you for all the donos. Sorry about the crappy news. The Yankees get swept. I will see you next time. Oh, come on. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It helps other Yankees fans find the channel. If you really enjoyed it, check out the swag section. We've got tons of great designs to support all your favorite Yankees. And if you simply cannot get enough Yankees content, check out the podcast version of this channel, The Freeze by NYY Recaps, available wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Derek. Thanks for watching. <laughs>